We are your home of independent, fearless, and credible journalism. Hello, this is Johnny Prime with me, Samuel Kojo Brace. Our lead stories this are tonight, Sanitation Minister under intense pressure to resign or be sacked as anti-corruption campaigners call on the special prosecutor to conduct an immediate lifestyle audit after it emerged. She kept a million dollars, other foreign currency, and several millions of cities in her home. And this MPs demand sacking of Cecilia Dapa after it emerged. Money amounting to millions of cities were stolen from a private residence as the case triggers call for a probe. We have details of all of those matters here. Now also, the minority demand an expedition of the parliamentary inquiry into leaked tape that exposed a conspiracy to remove IGP George Eko for Dampare and rig the 2024 elections. We have details into that story. Uh, from our studio here in Accra, we are live on DSTV channel 421, Go TV channel 125, around the world on myjoyonline.com. Stay with us for details. Now, the Sanitation and Water Resources Minister Cecilia Abinadapa is under intense pressure to resign or be sacked. In fact, in the last few hours, anti-corruption campaigners have been demanding that a special prosecutor conduct an immediate lifestyle audit. After it emerged, she kept a million dollars, other foreign currency, and several millions of cities in her home. The revelation came to light in court documents filed by Madame Dapa and her husband after the monies were allegedly stolen from a private residence by her house helps. The accused persons are currently facing trial, but the court case has turned the spotlight on the minister. We'll be speaking with lawyer Bobby Bunsen and banking consultant Richmond Etriahene. But first, let's go through how the event is alleged to have occurred. Now, uh, according to the amended charge sheet and brief fact presented in court, Ms. Boche, also known as Mabina, was a house help of the complainants, Daniel Osekufo and his wife, Cecilia. Abina Dapa, the court heard that Ms. Aj was also a former house help of the complainant. The complainant reported the case to the police in June of this year after detecting the theft of cash and their personal effect. The statement also says that, or the fact says Ms. Boche was caught entering the couple's room with a duplicate key. Upon entering the room, Mr. Kufo found Ms. Boche hiding behind the door. Now, after the incident, the complainant realized that some of their properties were missing. Ms. Ms. Boche was arrested and released on police inquiry bail, but went into hiding with her boyfriend, Benjamin, in Tamale. While in Tamale, they allegedly rented a three-bedroom apartment and a store. Upon intelligence, the police arrested Ms. Boche, leading to the retrieval of 400,000 U.S. dollars. Uh, 40,000, sorry, 40,000 US dollars and 72,619 cities, 70 pesos from the apartment. Ms. Boche allegedly used the stolen money to buy a three bedroom house, a double decker refrigerator, a water dispenser, a television set, a washing machine, and a chest cooler, among other items. Now, the fact also says she bought a, a Hyundai Elantra for Benjamin, who later sold it to purchase a Honda Civic. Ms. Botry also gave her father 50,000 Ghana cities and 1 million cities to her ex-boyfriend, Malik. Now, during interrogation, Ms. Botry implicated Sarah as her accomplice. The case is set to continue on August 2, 2023. So those are the facts of the matter. We will revert to the story shortly and bring you interactions at the back of the story. But let's go to Parliament now because there's growing calls for Minister for Sanitation and Water Resources, Cecilia Abinadapa, to be sagged after it emerged that millions of cities' foreign currencies were stolen from a private residence by her uh, house helps. Now, the accused persons are currently facing trial, but the report have triggered calls for her to immediately be sagged by the president over how she made that amount. 
less than 20 cmp for solar tuna kalba andrew dari chiwete mp for gumwa west richard jan mensa and kumbungo mp professor hamza adam demanding that she resigns or be sacked she should be sacked you think if if if, if it was under ndc that woman will still in will still be in office as we talk no no no, no. it's not be a matter of Madam Cecilia Dapa resigning. Madam Cecilia Dapa should be sacked. Simple. Why? Why? Where did, where, where did she get that money? It's not, it's not just even Ghana cities. Where did she get that, get that money? And, and accordingly, the, the cities is in millions. We are not able to tell how many millions or how much cities that they took from the house. Millions of cities, euros, pounds, whatever. The woman should be sacked. We should find out how they should get the money. And before we do those things, she should be sacked. Just this morning, I read the, the news. And I think it's unfortunate because um, I, I have not much concern about how she got the money. But uh, at this, uh, with this position, I think she should have deemed it right that such an amount should not be kept at home. Because we are even calling on ordinary people to put their money at the banks just to also help the, boost the economy. So if we can hold over a million dollars in your house, I think it's a bit questionable. And this, I think, uh, to me, she, she should do the honorable thing. We'll definitely demand that the minister clears the way. And that will simply mean that she should do the ultimate thing by resigning. Otherwise, the president must compel her to resign. Uh, lawyer Bob, Bobby Banson, who is a private legal practitioner, has been speaking at the back of the story, explaining the laws that govern this particular, uh, you know, that has to do with whether you can keep such an amount in your house or not. We'll bring that to you later. But we're joined via Zoom by banking consultant Rich Monet, Dr. Rich Monet uh, for more on this. Also joining us is anti-corruption campaigner uh, Vitus Azim. Grateful to you gentlemen for coming in here. Uh, let me start with you, um, uh, Dr. Rich Monet uh, Okay, so let, let me start with, with uh, Vitus Azim. But, but Chief, I'm grateful. How do you react to this you know this news in the first place and how do you expect the government to approach this matter uh it's, it's, it's very surprising and very disheartening when we are already facing a problem of a depreciating city in the country that one person has taken all this money and put it in under her bed it is possible that she is not the only one that got the money under her bed maybe there are others Okay. And so it will be necessary to make an investigation. But I think we should not just jump to the conclusion that she should be stuck. We need to find out the source of the money, why it is lying in her house, before we can talk of what action to take. Okay. So, so I mean, in the immediate uh, 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 circumstances, what do you expect to happen? Now people are calling for her to step aside. You are saying that that shouldn't be it. So what do you expect to happen in the immediate term? I am expecting a, an investigation by the relevant authorities. See, the Financial Intelligence Center was established to deal with such issues. Then the Ghana Revenue Authority, if it is found that it was from a business, would also find out whether she was paying tax or not. The Office of Special Prosecutor, with his, uh, uh, with his lifestyle audit, can also go into it. And the Commission on Human Rights and Civil Justice can also find out whether she declared herself at the time she was entering Parliament, I mean, becoming a minister, and whether between that time and this time these monies were accounted for or not. If the monies were not included in her previous asset declaration, then she has questions to answer. Well, um, you have people who say that during the former President John Mohammed's time, um, a deputy minister was sacked for wishing to have one million dollars. In this instance, we have a minister whose home a uh, million dollars has been stolen from. You, you think those who are calling for that are rushing the gun? Yes, I think so. It, but it depends on the, the will of the president. If the, will, the president has the willpower to deal with corruption, then he would at least ask her to step aside while the investigations are going on. Mm. Otherwise, you will just do it like the previous, the previous allegation, 
They just say, oh, she's not guilty, and that kind of thing. Mm. So, mm. I think that the investigation is necessary by independent institutions and not by the government. I don't expect much from the government when it comes to investigating this matter. What about the Office of the Special Prosecutor? I have mentioned four. The Office of the Special Prosecutor, the Commission on Human Rights and Social Justice, the Ghana Revenue Authority, and the Financial Intelligence Center. Mm. They all have various aspects of this to investigate. And then they can collaborate and come out with a report that will uh, indict the, the, the person if she has done the wrong thing. Mm. What must be the focus of this investigation, really? The focus must be what? The source of the, fund, the money, and two, why it was lying in the house instead of going to the bank. Mm. Because there's this issue about money. We have a money laundry, anti money laundering uh, act. And when you are keeping so much money in the house, the immediate suspicion is that this money has not been legally um, acquired. And that's why you're hiding it from the public eye, hiding it from the bank. It's been, I mean, we are almost 12 hours through the day since this story broke. We haven't heard anything from government. The president hasn't said anything. Um, people are expressing disappointment. Are you disappointed in the fact that you've not heard anything from the president so many hours I after the news broke? I am disappointed, but I'm not surprised. It's not new. Okay. Wow. There, were similar, there were similar cases in the past where you were expecting him to investigate or ask the president to step aside and he didn't. Or he did, but did not do anything on the, 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 the finding. Mm. Excuse me. So I'm, I am disappointed, but I'm not surprised about this. Mm. He's silent on this matter. As you said, there might be a lot more people who are having these monies with them. Would you then, you know, recommend that an investigation should go beyond the Minister for Sanitation and extend to other members of the government? But once they've done, they've done or we've not heard anything about them, can we just say we're extending an investigation to them? No, I mentioned that the, the Office of Special Prosecutor talked of a, a lifestyle audit. So, if he has the staff, he can go out there and look at certain people who are living certain lifestyles and investigate them. Mm. He himself said that he was going to do that, and so it will be surprising if he decides to do it. Mm. Interesting. Okay. All right. Um, grateful to you for joining us here. We look forward to see. Uh, but do you have a period within which you expect that something will happen, like the four institutions you've mentioned? Are you foreseeing that maybe, say, in the next 24 hours or within the next 48 hours, these institutions will act? Uh, I am not expecting anything like that. The Commission on Human Rights might be waiting for somebody to petition it. As for the Office of Social Prosecutor, the Financial Intelligence Center, and the TRA, they are directly under the executive, and they will be looking up to the executive to decide whether they should go ahead and investigate or not. So I wouldn't expect anything immediately. Okay. All right. Um, grateful to you for joining us here, Mr. Vaita Zazim. He is an anti-corruption campaigner. Uh, but let's uh, go back to Parliament because the minority in Parliament are calling for expedited hearings of the special committee set up by Parliament to investigate a leaked tape which allegedly exposed a plot to remove the IGP, Dr. George Akufo Dampari, and rake the 2024 election. Our former MPP, Northern Regional Chairman Bugri Nabu, has confirmed the authenticity of the tape as being one of the voices heard on it. Speaking to journalists in Parliament, the Deputy Minority Leader, Emmanuel Amakofibo, explained that names of the committee members have been forwarded to the Speaker and there is an immediate need to bring finality to the matter. If anybody had any doubt on the authenticity of that leaked tape, Yesterday in that uh, interview, our uh, senior uh, Bugrinabu basically cleared that doubt and basically confirmed that indeed that meeting took place and that that leak tape was authentic. Now, it's very, very clear. We also heard that uh, two of his secretaries, as the interview uh, told us, were picked up by the NIB. I think it's important that we revisit this matter this morning. One, we call on this parliament 
to basically continue that investigation, independent investigation. And so the speaker had directed that we uh, nominate members who have already done that. We believe that that committee must begin work as quickly as possible. Emmanuel Amakofibu also demanded that the police and other security agencies publicly speak on the alleged arrests made in connection with the leaked tape. It is also important that we know exactly what the police service is doing. We also must know what the interior ministry is doing. Now, we found out that two of the secretaries of uh, uh, Bugri Nabu was, were picked up yesterday. Now... It is important that this investigation is thorough. And that means that all those involved in that leak tape involvement must be part of this comprehensive investigation, including the police officers and everybody else involved. We need to get to the bottom of this matter. And as I said earlier, and the reason why I brought this up, it had everything to do with the stability, our democracy, and our, uh, and nas our national security. And it's very, very important that this matter, if anybody had any doubt, there was something that, quite frankly, was not true. It has been confirmed that, indeed, there was a meeting, there was this discussion about a conspiracy to remove the IGP, and that must concern every Ghanaian, and we must get to the bottom of it. In fact, one of the real concerning matters had to do the discussion in that league tape about plans to interfere with the 2024 elections. This country must be concerned, and that's why we are re-echoing a complete investigation, especially now that uh, Bugri Nabu has cleared every doubt that the tape was authentic. Now to other stories, uh, the Land and Natural Resources Minister Samuel Abu has described as unfortunate illegal mining activities on the Black Volta. In an interaction with the media, the minister revealed that 20 Shanghai machines were destroyed through a joint operation of the armed forces and the Savannah Regional Security Council. He further assured measures would be put in place to ensure all river bodies are protected. I just want to give a quick briefing on uh, the unfortunate reports we received about the Black Volta and the incidences of illegal small-scale mining activities on this river body of our country. The Black Volta uh, straddles between the Savannah through Bono all the way through our country and it's a very important river body of our country and therefore uh, the uh, need for us to protect that river body and others across the country is absolutely important. I'm happy to report that following um, the intelligence gathered and, and the reports which the ministry received working closely with the Minerals Commission and the Savannah Regional Security Council chaired by the Regional Minister Honorable Moazu Jibril, the 6BN in, 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 in collaboration with the military command of the Savannah region were able to carry out a recce, an intelligence gathering operation, and were able to ascertain the true facts on the ground. And as I speak to you now, a series of operations have been embarked upon my, the reports I've received suggest that 20 shanfines have been destroyed and a well thought through elaborate operational plan has been put in place to ensure that there are no recurrence of these illegal mining activities on this um, river body of our country. I mean, I think it's important that we have to take these measures because these are some of the river bodies which are largely not invaded by illegal small-scale mining um, operators that are activities and therefore if we if we um, take preemptive measures and take proactive measures to ensure that we protect um, that enclave it will be good for our country and I want to assure the country that we're going to do everything possible the Minerals Commission is working around the clock the Inspectorate Division as well as the Commission itself is supporting the Savannah Regional Security Council and Coordinating Council to be on top of this particular issue the further information we have is that some of these um, persons and operators have moved to the Bono East region of our country and therefore we began discussions with the commands of um, the central command of the Ghana Armed Forces to make sure that these individuals are flushed out. The most important thing is that the ministry assures the country that we're going to take all me measures necessary to protect all the river.
politics of our country. Yeah. <laughs>
he is running this campaign and not not on public funds but on support from well wishes and supporters he's not using government money and he stated it ad nauseum said he is not going to use public funds as president to support the party that he is going to found the party on private sector principles that is what powerful parties worldwide do the ANC of South Africa, the Chinese Communist People's Party. From Alan's three-day campaign tour of the Oti region to appeal to voters to vote for him during this pruning exercise. My name is Peter Sanu for Joy News. Now, to many, it is a family feud, a political battle between an uncle, Yusuf Osman, and a nephew, Manaf Ibrahim, in the MPP parliamentary primary in the Asawasa constituency. With the op opening of nominations for MPP orphan constituencies, the thought of an easy race for Manaf, a former contender in the race, has turned to be a rather fierce contest. Others are also joining the race, including Hajia Zainab Salo, the Ashanti Regional Financial Sec Secretary of the MPP, who doubles as regional head of Maslok. Nanaya Ojima put a spotlight on the Asawase constituency days into the opening of nominations. Asawase has been a safe seat for the National Democratic Congress in the Ashanti region. It is one of the two constituencies in the region never won by the NPP. The closest the party has come to victory in the constituency was in 2016 when they lost to NDC's Muntaka Mubarak by less than 6,000 votes. NPP leaders are optimistic of victory if unity is fostered. Noah Ousu is first vice chair of the Aswasi constituency. The party is convinced that when we come out with unity, anything can be achieved. Muntaka isn't a small person when it comes to politics, but we know that gradually, as we fought him previously, we can now you know, come together and then do something positive for ourselves. A staff at the office of the president, Yusuf Osman, is the latest candidate to have picked forms to contest the primary. A Mampurisi from the home of the Sariki Mampurisi of the Zongo community in Kumase, Yusuf is well known among residents of Sabun Zongo. To his supporters, he is a unifying candidate because he is the only one who has refused to align to any faction in the party at the constituency level. Baron Atuguba touts the ability of the aspirant. Happen. We went to 2020 election, lost like 20,000 votes. So if I said, if you continue on doing the same thing, you continue to get the same results. And there's some saying that people do some skirts and blouse in Asawasu constituents. So in case you present the same candidate and the other candidate who thought that people do that underground campaign against him, what would they do? They will go the same way, go and do campaign against him. It won't affect the candidate, but rather go and affect the party at large. So thinking that new face is the person that can unite both fashion. He from the household of the Sariki Mamprusi also is Manaf Ibrahim, who has long worked towards leading the NPP in the constituency. The former staff of the vice president's office was suspended by the party in 2016, denying him of an opportunity to contest the race after filing nomination. His supporters, who contend his suspension was not justified, say Manaf holds the party's key to success. He is a unifier and he's a philanthropist of this Aswansi constituency in the nation at large because not being in a in, in, in a leadership role as a MC or MP or a parliamentary candidate or whatever what have you he's doing so well in the areas of health as one simple you for you for the or be anyone who bet you a cast a brother no or more as one simple you for when my any new mood you say or bet me a bayer MP yeah one you mood you because of strong young coupon and who more bro any more or brand new one say meanwhile the Ashanti regional treasurer of the NPP, Hajia Zainab Salo has announced her interest to contest NPP Aswasi primary. The regional Maslok boss expressed concern over lack of unity among party members. Well, if I was to start to my campaign, I'll beg them that they should vote for me so that we're able to bring unity among the party. Our intention and our agenda as an NPP is to break the eight. But you can't break the eight without unity. As I see MPP, we are more than even NDC. It is expected that others will pick nominations in the party's bid to wrestle power from the fifth term incumbent MP, Muntaka Mubarak. For Joy News, 
na na ya reporting Well, we'll take a break, but before we do, let's return to our earlier story on the sanitation minister and the sort of monies that were paid from her house and the reactions that have been coming throughout the day. Now, former President John Dramani Mahama has been tweeting. Now, um, he says, and he tweeted, that $1 million plus 300,000 euros plus millions of Ghana cities in a Ghanaian minister's home, scandalous, even if genuinely acquired, why keep millions of hard currency at home? Will at N. Akufuado ever set a good example for public office holders in his administration? That's a question that the former president asked. Now, uh, Dionli Abe has commented, and he says, for the records, JDM sacked a minister who was caught on tape saying, quote, I will resign from politics if I make $1 million, unquote. I mean, just the thought of acquiring that much warranted her dismissal. Sylvester Asari says, let us get a, a, a breath, Mr. Former President. All of you are the same. Isaac Ike says, Nada and all his ministers are candidates for jail. Prince Peck says, let's begin to ask ourselves, really, really, is this the kind of visionary leader we envisaged? When we went to the post in 2020 to elect this president, your guess is as good as my hashtag Kokromoti power. Uh, well, Daniel JM says, Attorney General has not heard this one, maybe yet to hear. Gideon Mensa Yorson says, irrespective of the fact that the minister's act is fictitious, Mr. Mahama should not have the moral right to talk about matters like this in this country. This man is okay. Like how? Hey, Fidelis Anyagre says, this is just a sanitation minister. What about the finance minister's home? We are finished as a country. Francis Frimpon says, it's only shallow-minded people that will support this minister. This is the IMF money that has been shared among uh, themselves. Well, uh, those are some of the comments that you have been sharing on our Facebook page. We'll take a quick break. We will be back with more stories. Stay with us. Welcome back from the break. Now, as the country continues to rebuild health facilities across the country due to the devastating impact caused by COVID-19, the Christian Health Association of Ghana says that time has come for the country to build a responsive, resilient sector for quality health care delivery. There is more in this report. The maiden edition of the Safe Care Awards has been held to honor deserving stakeholders in the health sector. With the help of the Health Facilities Regulatory Agency, the awards are to honor and recognize health facilities and internationally certified safe care assessors who have championed health care quality improvement. Fifteen individuals and facilities were awarded with the country director of safe care, Dr. Bonificia E.J. Benefo, being adjudged the overall best. Speaking to Joy News, the executive director of CHAG, Dr. Peter Yeboah, emphasized that quality is an important factor in the health delivery system. Dr. Yebo added that the country is pushing to attain the utmost level of safe care according to global standards. The Chag Pharmacist Safe Care Quality Improvement Program is an important portfolio within the Chag Network um, as an implementing partner and a faith based Christian uh, organization. We believe that quality is a centerpiece of our holistic health and healing. Uh, ensuring that anyone who visits a child facility will have the utmost optimal quality health services. And so for the past three years, um, in collaboration with pharmacists, we have adopted and embedded the Safe Care Quality Implement Program to ensure that our systems, our environment, our staff, uh, organizational environment reflects our ideals and values 
of our highest accountability uh, with respect to the mandate that we have to promote health and healing. And we do so aware that quality is probably the single most important structure, system, process, or outcome that is expected within the entire health sector. Uh, we believe strongly that for CHAG, we are the anointed and appointed guardian of safety, um, uh, best experience in healthcare, and of course, effectiveness in the way we package, uh, define, defend, and we deliver health services. Karen Obing's report read to you. Now, fishermen in Ghana who are currently observing the closed fishing season continue to receive support from government and other benevolent organizations in order to cope with the closure of the season. Ghana's Ministry of Fisheries and Aquaculture Development, together with their counterparts in Côte d'Ivoire, closed the fish season to both artisanal fishers and the industrial trawlers on the 1st of July. But the president of Challenging Height, James Kofi Annan, says he is calling on government to provide appropriate insurance packages for the affected individuals whose livelihoods depend on a fishing value chain. He was speaking when he presented financial support valued at 250,000 cities to fishermen at Winneba in the central region. The support valued 250,000 Ghana cities to 368 fishermen in Winneba is to help the beneficiaries cope with the impact of this year's fishing close season. According to the president and founder of Challenging Heights, James Kofianan, the beneficiaries were carefully selected from among those who are caregivers of children of school going age and those whose sources of income have ceased as a result of the closed season. Presenting the items, Mr. Annan expressed his displeasure towards government for not doing enough to mitigate the impact of the closed season on the fishermen and fishmongers whose livelihoods are being affected. We know that there are over 200,000 artisanal fishermen along the coastal areas and uh, the value chain within the fishing communities has employed over 2.2 million individuals and all these people are now at home not doing anything because of the closed season and there is no insurance for them, there is no social security, there is no leave for them. So we have seen the hardship, we have seen the difficulties that they are facing. So we decided as organization Challenging Heights to provide the support for them to mitigate the it. hardship. We are what standing on this to call on government to implement um, carefully Recruitment. this closed season program. We believe that there must be some mit appropriate mitigating policies that should come with it because these fishermen have no other alternative livelihoods apart from the fishing that they are engaged in. So the government must um, provide appropriate alternative mitigating uh, livelihoods for them. He lamented that in view of the consequences of the closed season, his organization is calling on government to provide appropriate insurance packages for the affected individuals whose livelihoods depend on the fishing value chain. Uh, this money is for free. It's a grant that we are using to cushion them. And thanks to uh, people who support us, we are able to uh, support them through grant. We, it's not a loan. We are not taking it back. We are giving it to them just to cushion them because it's very difficult. Poverty is endemic. I mean, instantly, once the uh, close season is applied, because these are fishermen don't have saving schemes they don't have um, social security they don't have any insurance mechanism so as soon as they don't go to work then they are instantly uh, um, plant themselves into poverty and so this support is just right, pushing to them to be able to live meaningful right, lives within this one month period that they are not going to work this year the organization has so far supported 350 senior high school students 245 TV students and 235 tertiary students across the country. The organization has also supported 320 farmers with farm input during the farming season and is currently supporting over 500 children who have been rescued from worst forms of child labor and trafficking situations as well as over 600 women in various livelihood programs. Reporting for Joy News, Richard Kujinyakon. This is still Join Us Prime. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with Showbiz.
and Becky Bags is in the house. I don't know whether he's, she's seen one million dollars before. <laughs> yeah, Becky Well, oh, I'm working towards it. <laughs> I'm cutting SOTs <laughs> uh, and praying so hard that one million dollars mm. uh, would be in my possession soon. One day. One day. Yeah. Well, we'll oh, get there. We'll get there. What, 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 I'm, I'm only thinking about what to do with the one million dollars. One million dollars. Um, as for me, I think that I'll use part of this to sponsor um, the needy. Mm. You know, like set up an initiative. Relax, where you can relax, people relax. We'll school, get the money. Uh, relax. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The way you are telling me your dreams and No, it's not dreams, everything. but it's things I'll do when I get the money. When you get Ten, the money. Yeah. When I get the money, I'll have, um, mm. I'll pray. You pray. And say a very big thank you to Jesus. Allah. Mm. Hey, Praise pay your tight. So what I'm saying is like a, the tight will be $100,000. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk about Pata Fabris because uh, he's been in the news. He's been doing his media rounds and all of that, and he's been having loads and loads of conversations. He actually has a song out, mm. uh, but he says that he would love to collaborate with Rick Ross. Why are you smiling? No, no, no. no. I mean, it will be, it will he, be, actually, he actually met uh, yeah. Rick Ross it back in the good. U.S., mm -hmm. And he thinks that he's the only uh, person that he would love to collaborate with. Patapa. International artist, would you love to feature? International? Mm. Oh. Me Ghana, be me yes, me future will be our Ghana. That's why he's asking where, international. Yeah. which international artist? Um, I think, say, me uh, recross or you good. Yeah. Because, um, Mira US, when you say recross, I'm Casami Mani, my boss, not a McQuerno, on the old chimney, if you want to go home, if I don't say because you'll be a you want to meet Rick Ross, or you'll be a simple on a put it on Pantali show on a phone one table nine or it's in a dining a car, be in a table nine a car, be but Bocono simple. I'm going to see this on shut up near Fundum. You see, and I mean, we say, ah, Sana, artist na what can celebrate here, and yes, she's a home. Mm. And yeah, the bia, a yeah, guy bia, like you focus on what you are doing and you get money to take care of your family. Mm. You focus on what you're doing yeah. and get the one million dollars for your, your family. family. <laughs> but a in the spirit. Race, let's, let's do something about okay. cues and lyrics. You know, we've been yeah. telling you all about yeah. cues and mm -hmm. lyrics, and mm -hmm. now we have the grand finale of uh, Joy. Prime's most talked about music reality show, Cues and Lyrics. And it's finally here. The five finalists, Limuel, TM Music, Lovett, uh, Kwabna Mufasa, and Tregan uh, are all poised and enthused to mount the final stage of the competition with Electrifying Show on Saturday, July 2022. So uh, the grand finale, which comes off uh, the Silicon House production, Tessano, will witness performances from uh, Yacht hitmaker Paluta and uh, some evicted contestants, among others. <laughs> Through the grooming stage of going through the 10 weeks with the, uh, the judges, mm -hmm. their you know, remarks and their queries on me uh, sort of influenced my decision to actually select a high life, you know, Jenna, okay. to be able to sing and also rap. So I'm really trying to put everything in good amount, allow me, my mind to think, allow my mind to fly. But also when I'm piecing it together, it doesn't shout. It just makes the sound that it needs to make. We have our tough times and then uh, good times to uh, we've managed to the finals, so it's been good. Mixed feelings. Yes. Mm. You know, I've never been in a competition before. This is my very first and I've made it here. So I'm just contemplating on how it will be like. Like, I don't know how to feel. I'm feeling every type of way. I want to love you more. The, 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 the grand finale, Charlie. Same old vibe. Same old vibe with something spicy.
So, Brace, this yeah. is for, you cannot w uh, miss out on this particular no, no, edition. Not at all. But we started with them. We're going to oh, end with, with them. Man. Okay. When we started, you well, you had you know something to do, which is sing. I, 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 so I this evening, song myself. yeah. Before we go, before we wrap up, um, uh, yeah, you you should do okay. something to. On your book. She love kitchen. Oh, that's from Kofi Rata. Yeah. My favorite pepper soup, your love chicken. Mm. Ah, hey, fancy, fancy. That's it, that's it. Kofi Rata. Well, anyway. on that beautiful uh -huh. note, uh, on that beautiful <laughs> note, we end Joy News Prime here mm -hmm. on the Joy News channel. For more news, log on to myjoyonline.com. Uh, that's where you find all the news. And tomorrow, please join Joy Prime's uh, Cues and Lyrics finalists for an amazing time. Let me do my uh, my own set before we go. <clears throat> hey. Do we still have time? I will do. Hey. While you're playing the beat in your head. You're down, I see me, I'm cool. <laughs>